Well, hey everybody, this is Bob coming to you from my home studio, sheltering in place, and like you, just trying to survive these uh, crazy, crazy times during COVID-19. With, with all this downtime, trying to reconnect with some of my old hobbies, which is collecting music-related items. And of course, being a radio and musician, uh, I've got a ton of stuff. Sometimes I'll post a photo and somebody will ask me, hey, what is that in the background of the photo? And uh, does it work? And where do I get one? So I thought I'd take a little bit of time, show you some of my goodies. And uh, hey, what better way to kill some time? Uh, over here is something that I'm sure you remember, some 8-track players. You remember 8-tracks from the 60s and 70s? Well, some of you do anyway. Uh, got quite a few back there that I've collected. A lot of Beatle ones, of course, and 8-tracks were, well, they're kind of unusual. A lot of folks don't understand their purpose. But I've got two, yeah, not one, but two 8-track players. Top one is a Super Scope, bottom one's a Panasonic couple names from our past that are quite popular in the electronics world. And uh, yeah, we'll turn it on. It's the Beatles, Beatles Revolver album. And remember you changed the track, you had to press uh, the button with your finger. So yeah, they're a little hard to find these days, but uh, they are out there on eBay and antique stores and garage sales and so forth. Got a reel-to-reel -reel player. A lot of folks want to know if that still works. Yeah, they're quite expensive. You can find them on eBay. You're lucky to find one. It'll work. Uh, this one actually works. In a, it's an Akai from the 1970s. And uh, let's flip it on here. Back in the day, when they made albums, they actually made copies of the albums on reel to reel. They're quite expensive now. 40, 50, 60 bucks for an album on a reel to reel. Uh, this is the Kinks, greatest hits. So, yeah, that one does work, and uh, not only does it uh, play back, but you can also uh, record on it as well. Pardon me while I move this uh, camera around a little bit. Uh, one of the things a lot of folks ask me about is this. Think you know what this is? Anybody know what this is? It's a record vacuum cleaner. Yeah, you used to uh, put your records in here, it would vacuum the dust off, put a little chemical on it, it'd clean it, polish it up. There was the quick down and dirty $10 version. And then if you really had big bucks, you'd go buy the uh, one that actually plugged into the wall, press a button, and it would spin the record and record it. Unfortunately, none of mine work, but uh, Make a nice conversation piece and a little hard to find as well. We've got our old uh, cassette recorders from the 60s. This is a Super Scope. Boy, we had fun with those, didn't we? And when the 70s came around, we had fun with these. Yeah. Breaker, breaker. This is a big bear to little dove. Your old CB player, Cobra, remember? And uh, that'd be uh, this whole thing would go in the front seat of your car. I don't think they uh, even talk on CBs anymore. I could be wrong. I plugged it in and tried to talk, and no one's answered me. Maybe they just don't like me. I don't know. And of course, I get a lot of questions about this. Someone saw it on the back uh, shelf. It's uh, Edison Record. This was actually from the early 1900s. Before there were albums, there were cylinders. And you would take the cylinder, would have a recording on it, you'd put it in the uh, record player, turn it, this would spin, and you'd hear the actual recording. So you can find these still at antique stores uh, for about 10 bucks, and they're a great little conversation piece, and uh, just kind of reminds me of, wow, how things uh, started way, way back in the day and how far we've come electronically. Of course, uh, I've got a huge collection of transistor radios being in radio, Different colors, different makes and models through the years. Some of them um, AM only because FM wasn't around back in the early days. One of my favorites from the 70s, remember this one? The ball radio? Yeah, it had a big long chain on it. You walk on the beach, spin it around. Uh, they were considered to be pretty cool. They were made by Panasonic, the ball radio. And uh, just a lot of unusual versions by different companies, General Electric and so on and so forth, Samson, 
of transistor radios through the years. I like this one because it was red and gold, so it must be important. So a uh, lot of goodies, having a lot of fun, and uh, of course, uh, still once in a while, get back there, get on my drum set, break out my guitar, play a song or two, and uh, try to relax a little bit, get away from the anxiety that's out there for so many folks. So anyway, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me. Hope uh, you found this fun and uh, hope we can do it again. I can show you some of my other goodies or if you get a chance, show me some of the stuff that you've got in your uh, hobby collection. Love to see it. In the meantime, stay healthy and be safe out there. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye, everybody.